in the far future of 2019, World War III has happened. And in the city of Neon Tokyo, a boy with psychic powers is about to start the second Big Bang. Welcome to Baka Reviews. I am joined by Weez. Oh, frick, I thought we were doing the Mario movie. <laughs> oh. I, I thought we were doing One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also joined by Ramen Cat. Hello. And uh, thank you for w watching, uh, going through that cringy uh, opening. I couldn't think of anything, so there we go. That's what we got. Very nice. So, yeah, uh, if you can't guess, we're reviewing Akira, a yeah. 1988 Japanese sci fi dystopian future uh, cyberpunk. -y? Cyberpunk? Military, gore, horror, senin. <laughs> this is senin. Oh, that makes sense. It's senin. Adventure, yeah. action. Psychological What thriller? other tag words are on here? Based Anyways. on the manga of the same name. Of Akira. But yeah. So yeah. Welcome to our review. Um, I said this twice already. I'll probably edit it to make it sound better. But <laughs> yeah. Let's dive on in. So first off, we're not going to do a recap of this if well, i might want to give a description at least i did it did in the opening thing oh yeah it's about a kid <laughs> on a motor it's about motorcycle gang members it's about a kid in his motorcycle it is about a kid in his motorcycle and then his friend gets superpowers and nukes the world and then he just kind of like rides off on his motorcycle rides off on his motorcycle because he only nuked a little little area the what weren't they in the um they were like in a they're a in a stadium yard. Yeah, oh, stadium. yeah, they're in the stadium. They're in a stadium, and then they moved to the a trash yard. Moved, knew, he knew more than a little bit of the area. Well, he, no, just when he, at the very end, he kind of yeah. nuked that one area. But anyways, they go back to it. We're not going to do a recap like we normally do. This film is from 1988, and it's also like one of the most known anime films. So if you haven't watched it yet... Go on to Crunchyroll, go to YouTube, wherever you do. Apparently it's on Hulu. Go to Hulu and watch it. It's definitely worth watching, even this if show you don't like it. show is not endorsed by any of those platforms. I don't think it is endorsed. Maybe Crunchyroll would endorse it. But no, I meant us. <laughs> oh, we're not endorsed by any of them. I wish. I, yeah, I kind of wish too. How many years until we get a Crunchyroll sponsor? Uh... What if we just said Crunchyroll every 10 minutes in all of our regions? <laughs> they probably play. wouldn't sponsor us because we say Crunchyroll every, all the time. So then they'd be What like, if I make two versions and they, they can either sponsor idea. us and we put that version out or they don't and they get the bland non-Crunchyroll version? That, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, That's a good that, idea. Okay, this is not Faka Talk. We're, we're going to do an actual <laughs> review now. So, uh, yeah. So what did you guys think of the film? I quite liked this movie more than I was expecting to. <laughs> like okay. I liked like, it a lot. <laughs> the be the beginning sucked me in. The uh, I liked the animation a lot. I liked the characters a lot. They felt very real and grounded, which is a lot of my complaint sometimes in like anime movies and stuff, where it's like I don't understand why anyone's doing anything. And in this one, I more understood like like the characters and what they were what kind of people they were. I could get it behind the like biker gang like mentality and they weren't like super good guys, but they weren't like total jerks either. They were just like had their biker gang, you know, thing going on. They definitely felt more realistic. The than, like, opening was insane. It was so fast paced. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, I think the opening's my favorite part. The opening to like the middle part yeah. is probably my favorite. The end... I don't know how I feel about I've watched it twice now and I still don't know how I feel about I the end. Do you think the ending kind of sucks? Like, I don't think the build up to the ending sucks. I think the very end ending kind of sucks of just like and it's done. So like the final five minutes. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. What do you think, Ramcat? Um, it was OK. I mean, I'm usually like I, I, I like movies like this and stuff, but I just it was weird. I watched the whole thing. I didn't hate it all, like watching it. Like, I I liked the characters to an extent, and but just by the time I got done watching it, I was just kind of like watching the credits roll by. I'm like, you know, 
I don't think I like this movie. <laughs> but it took you until the end to realize it. It took me to the end to realize it. Yeah. It's not like I was just like outright like I can't get into this movie and I hate it. The animation is really good. I mean, there was a few little spots in the animation. That was yeah. Like the atypical like, oh, someone's eye is slightly off, but like the artwork was beautiful. <clears throat> just I don't know. For some reason, I just did. I don't know. Maybe I'm not big on like dystopian. Well, I can't really say that because I like shows like Edge Runners. I'm not yeah. really big on dystopian either, and I really like this movie. Yeah, it's weird. I like like the scene. I think what it was is to me, it felt too much like even alien mm. without having the joy of giant space monsters ending the world. Yeah, instead you get like a... I get mutant baby. Kind of like a tragic, like... <laughs> like I, I, I was just waiting to hear Shinji getting the singularity. <laughs> like, that that's what it felt like. And it's like, it felt like cosmic theme, like yeah. with the end of the world, without having that cosmic payoff. That's like re-watching it last night. That's actually what I... I had a thought very similar to that. Where I was watching the very end of it, and I was like, I seem to remember it actually just like destroying the whole world. Like my first watch through, for some reason I had it in my mind, like when I was watching it again, I was expecting that to just destroy the whole world. Yeah. And then I got to the end, I'm just like, oh, like we we're just joking in the beginning. It literally just destroys like a, a stadium. Yeah. Yeah, it just like does. not even like it all of Neon what, Tokyo is destroyed. It, it's just like no. a little part. It like, does what it did back at the beginning of the movie, yeah. which seemed like it's like okay, you had this giant thing. And it's like yeah, the uh, what's the character's name? Like it's the powers. Oh, uh, um, Tetsuo. Tetsuo. It's like yes, Tetsuo could have been a massive threat to the world because I mean he rips a satellite out of space. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like okay, you're destroying everything, but you're not putting it in a scale. Well, I mean, I guess to be fair, as I'm thinking about it, sorry, people, I tend to think as I'm speaking like of other things. <laughs> yeah. My brain is going like ten different directions at once. I guess it really wouldn't matter too much if it did destroy the world or not, because the world's already been destroyed with world war three yeah <clears throat> so having a giant true. having a giant chunk of the city just suddenly get like sunk um i guess does have a little bit more impact now that i think of it because it's like there's actually not that many people left well it's it's weird <clears throat> because a lot of people believe that neon tokyo is just like a dying city mm -hmm. like the infrastructure they're not improving on their infrastructure anymore like the opening scene's actually really good to show this because you see most of the city in ruins. Yeah. And then like even the biker gangs, like one guy goes down the wrong ramp and just like gets killed because <laughs> like there's at the end of that ramp there's just rubble. Yeah. Like he doesn't realize like there's nothing at the end of that yeah, ramp. I think <clears throat> I don't know. That's the thing. It's like the whole movie had like kind of that impending dread of this this is just the end like of yeah. everything because everything is decaying it's like but yeah it's like there's still people like there's still nice things in the city like nice yeah. places and stuff and it's like i don't know i guess i'm so used to movies like this is dystopian there's absolutely nothing nice well it kind of feels like cyberpunk yeah in a lot of yeah. ways like if you look at the lore of cyberpunk and i think they get a lot of well how old is the cyberpunk rpg uh 90s i want to say okay so this was before yeah akira was before cyberpunk a lot of that's what i was gonna say it, looking at the lore of cyberpunk and if you play the cyberpunk 2077 games, it was published the same year this oh it was. It was. really yeah 1988 wow maybe they uh inspired two, two great minds think alike i guess but like <laughs> i guess the manga would have been first trick yeah, yeah. So. but if you look at it Neon Tokyo is like one city amongst like this like nuclear like hellscape. hellscape. And then if you look at it like Night City in Cyberpunk 2077 is just like this one city at the edge of America. And America is basically just this ruined country. Yeah. Like technically Night City is a flourishing town. You have rich people. You yeah, have like industry. Like it's irradiated wastelands and stuff. Yeah. So it kind of has that same feeling where like things are bad. But people have banded together to create a city. But in a way, the city is also in trouble because it's currently dying. Yeah. I don't know. 
<clears throat> it's honestly kind of hard for me to pinpoint what it is that I just, I guess I didn't like about it. Maybe it's the pacing. The pacing is odd. The pacing is probably maybe the worst part of the movie. I don't know. Which that, is it's, funny. It's pretty fast. It felt a little disjointed in parts. I, I think honestly, as, as I think about it, that might be part of the big thing is like, if pacing isn't like good, to me, it, it just kind of pulls me out of it. It's funny though, because Akira is known for being one of the oldest anime that like changed the anime industry. Oh yeah, because of its pacing. Yeah. I mean, compared to some of the other stuff from the time, it's a gem. Yeah, compared I... to what we have now, it's prehistoric. Well, right. It's kind of <laughs> like you have to look at it as the stepping stone to what we have now, and that's what yeah. Akira. That's why Akira is so well known. Like you look at the art, you look at the story, the pacing. Yeah. Like it's all a stepping stone to say even like Evangelion. Yeah, I I do have to say, but the one thing, like I said, I like the artwork and the animation. It gave me heavy like old like MGM film vibes, like Secret of Nim and yeah. things like that. Like or like All Dogs Go to Heaven, like just how much detail they put in the backgrounds. It's not a Ghibli style detail. It's just like, look at all this yeah. work. It still feels like a matte painting. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. somebody actually like sat down and was like, we need a background for this. I'm going to paint it. Yeah. Like it feels that way. Um, I did love the details in the city and stuff. I don't know. I just, like I said, for some reason, just towards the end, I was like, mm, not my thing. Well, that's reasonable. I mean, the, the ending is very much, we've said it multiple times already, but even Galleon like. Yeah, the yeah. end of Evangelion feels rushed because it was rushed, and in this, I feel like they do that on purpose. Yeah, because like, well, there's, there's no other way you can go really. Like, I, I do wish they went a more like grounded route, kind of, because everything felt pretty grounded until he just started like spouting like sprouting baby flesh yeah because like the psychic powers and like, stuff like outside they of made sense outside yeah. of illusions and stuff it really wasn't like super yeah outlandish well and i think that's what makes the ending so controversial is the fact of they wanted it to just kind of be random that's what it felt like yeah they wanted it to be like it were ramping up from biker gangs fighting in the streets to all of a sudden a laser satellite is like nuking two kids <laughs> in a junkyard that yeah. was awesome like, i think the um in the i've read that the manga has the same ending but it builds up to it more so it feels a little more like not that so would make sudden. sense like i kind of wish they would have expanded on the like the resistance the revolution like why yeah people see akira in the street and then all of a sudden everybody's just up to like tear apart the city like why is everybody all of a sudden wanting to do that that was one thing to me too that was weird at first they're like make it out to the, the akira or akira like the whole thing is secret yeah but then it's like suddenly it's like oh well everyone knows about this it's like a big prophecy thing it's like okay they never bothered to explain it's like okay akira is like a psychic entity and Akira was the first psychic child, as far as I know. Right, but yeah. it's like it builds it up as like this big psychic entity that just kind of is there. Yeah. And it's like they never kind of hint towards like, oh, okay, do people know about this? Because basically it's like they're picking up on it or something. Well, or... It, 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 it existed before. Like it destroyed a huge chunk of the world before. Akira and then they stopped started it. World War III. Right. Yeah. So then they stopped Akira and they like put him into pieces and... Right, shoved like, him in it, this thing. It starts out making it feel like, oh, this is a big secret. Yeah. Well, it like is that. a and secret like, because everyone knows. It is a secret because nobody knows what the Akira is in that vault. Right. But people know of the concept of Akira. Everybody believes that Akira is the psychic being in that vault being held captive. Mm -hmm. uh, where what they don't realize, and the only like the higher ups people know, is that Akira is actually dead and it's literally just tissue samples. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like like uh like the jedi purge or something where like nobody yeah. really like it's it, it's already been dealt with so people don't really think about it or they don't know that much so there's a lot of rumors and the government just doesn't want people to ask questions so it is a secret what the thing is but people know akira exists or has existed okay yeah i might have just missed like some of the parts there but yeah <laughs> it just kind of and like boom said i just 
it would have been nice to know a little bit more about like the revolution and stuff it felt like there was a lot of interesting story points like that, that's yeah. one thing yeah I can't, I can't say the show is uninteresting i found it very interesting but they all kind of felt like they dead end at points i think that's probably the manga like part of it being adapted from a manga where the manga goes into details about each of those things and and yeah. puts a full conclusion on them the way it felt like, but the way it felt like it should have been was like okay there's like these uh, protests and revolutions because people are protesting something that the former prime minister did like tax things tax, that, like yeah. broke the city it's like okay that i could see like morphing into this thing of people following akira or something but it was just like nope now we're barbarians yeah <laughs> and that's kind of one thing i was a little confused on both watch throughs is i kind of get the resistance you yep. or the not the resistance i keep on saying resistance the rebellion mm -hmm. uh i kind of get that because the city is kind of crap you can kind of tell all the politicians are just like mon money hungry like yeah. people like i get that people would want a better city and then all of a sudden people see uh what's his name tetsuo they think he's akira and all of a sudden they're just like willing to destroy the city yeah but wait a second weren't they just kind of like save the city yeah weren't they wanting to like fight over the city like, that I don't know. actually um, as i think about it, that's another plot point is the uh resistance like the little bit that there is that the one girl was helping with like that plot not their not her group but the politician that's like doing yeah. doing all it just came out of nowhere and just ended abruptly it's like okay i don't care that this guy's dying because he's been in two scenes before this. well i think that shows i think what it is is it showed that he was actually controlling the resistance and he was still the problem yeah because mm. he was just I, I can see that but it's like it would have been nice to see like in a show with that much detail of stuff it would have been nice to see just a little bit more you know yeah and i think that's where the manga probably yeah. covers it. i do think the rebellion like aspect was the weakest like there wasn't much that much to it right it felt more of just a like a bridge for the main character to get involved into this stuff yeah right. i mean i'm willing to give the manga a try like It'd be interesting and probably a very good read i didn't mind the people like backing tetsuo immediately because there's that whole like akira cult and stuff that's going on so there's a bunch of people that are just like yeah yeah but other than like one scene you never know you like you never hear anything about them of the akira cult yeah yeah you get like there's some like flashes of people and there's people mention the akira cult and how people have like waited for their savior basically to come back everyone just hates the government so much i think that they're willing to like back give be backed by the like yeah monster. I mean it's just kind of weird to see people willingly just dying like in the street to lasers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not that many though and I don't know if they realized what was actually going to happen. Yeah. I mean they're probably like, "Oh, look Cause, at this, the crazy thing." Yeah, the whole on. city is like uh, there's tons of protests and stuff and they're all just like get beat down by police. So they're just used to like I yeah. think they just hate this system so much that they're willing to back this guy. I think they might also think that he's like, like they think he's Akira, which is this legendary figure that's like going to be their savior. But it's actually just this kid that got powers. Yeah. So I think they're more expecting him to like be a savior instead of just a kid that like hates Destroyed stuff everything. too. Yeah, that would make sense. Like totally can see the miss understanding of like especially if it's realistic like mm -hmm. everything's realistic in this movie to the point where you could definitely see people not understanding all the circumstances because they don't know the circumstances yeah yeah and that's what i liked about it it felt the story felt realistic to me and how people reacted and how the main characters reacted where like the main character is hunting down his friend and then he says his friend became a psychopath and now he's like Okay, I've got to kill him or something. Yeah, like he's... I, Okay, I did like that because I get really tired of the but I have to save you trope. He's like, well, he's a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. and then the very end where he starts to like be like, save me, you know, I'm dying. And he has more empathy for him as he sees him going through this like horrific thing. Yeah, like he, so, he doesn't understand it at first and then just kind of is blindly doing it. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, okay, this is a mercy thing. Not yeah. A, 
I mean, and I do get why he went after him afterwards, too, because of the fact of Tetsuo killed one of his friends, like one right. of his close friends. Yeah. Like that, I did like the little detail of that, like down to where the main character is just like runs his friend, like after his friend dies, like blows up his bike. And then his other friend's like, why'd you do this? Like, I got to send his bike off to him. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's a cool little detail. That was a cool moment. Like we actually get to see like what, like some of the things of like how your guys' gang operates. Yeah. Right. That was really cool. I did like the, um, I don't know. I kind of like the. Ah, uh, what's the the general's name? Uh, oh, Shikishima. <laughs> that guy is awesome. He's like he's kind of like second main character. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know how to feel about him at first because like the, my first watch through, I'm just like, okay, he's the evil general that just is like manipulating these kids for power. No, I and think then, he like, was trying to do it to like protect them and use them to protect the city. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like and watching it a second time, I get, definitely got that feeling. He actually cared about these kids. Yeah. And he like. cared about safety too, where it was like, if this guy starts going too much, just end him because we can't risk this much power yeah. being unleashed. Yeah, because he even offers like come like to Tetsu like towards the end, he's like, come back with me, you know, you know, we'll try to help you. Really, the uh, mad scientist is like one of the main is like the main villain of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he allowed. well, he was purposely hiding information. Like he was yeah. hiding the fact that uh, uh, Tetsuo was like getting so powerful. So quickly. yeah, yeah, it was like his. And he also partially didn't expect it and was just kind of like kind of playing idiot. The, that stupid scientist. The and scientist is yeah. too smart that not he doesn't have common sense. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that was one of the themes of the movie is like the um, the like problems with worshiping science yeah where like he was so obsessed with just finding information that he like destroyed so much and caused so much problem and ended up killing himself because uh tetsuo like nuked the area um that like he he was like worshiping just knowledge and didn't care about like any of the repercussions so he was like an interesting yeah, that definitely, like, that was an interesting, like, core theme. Because, yeah. like, the whole theme kind of felt like just don't blindly follow. Yeah. You know, like, that and also just, like, absolutely, like, really at its very core, like, absolute power corrupts. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was one thing, I guess, like, I think one of the things that kind of threw me off, uh, some thinking about it, is I was expecting the story to go differently. Mm -hmm. I was expecting it to be Tetsuo's powers kicked up and then he would go back to like the bike gang and like because the way I've seen like reviews and stuff done of it and heard how it paces even is like it makes it sound like he goes back and like their gang becomes like the superior gang and then like it's tied into the revolt mm. and then like it goes like right. him being power hungry at yeah. that point. Like, yeah. That's the way it's always seemed portrayed. I didn't expect it to just be a little bit of the gang his power start up and then it's just like psychological like him violence right. going on a through. rampage yeah yeah i, I think yeah, that might have been the big thing that was like kind of threw me off yeah i yeah i hadn't heard like anything about this movie so i didn't know like anything except a guy in a motorcycle and the little like line like the drift that he does with the, the, line of the drift. yeah the akira yeah. drift with the uh with the backlight of their motorcycle that's like the only thing i knew about is people are like oh that's a really cool effect that's in akira and that's famous so i didn't know anything about the story or the characters or anything so i wasn't expecting anything to happen specifically but i wasn't expecting him to just be evil and just like start going yeah. on a rampage. But it was it was a thing of just that whole thing of absolute power. Girls. Yeah, because even the children are like you have to like there's like these psychic ch creepy psychic old man children. Yeah, and I bought it, it pretty easily because this kid is already like angry, grew up on the streets, hates like you know the other biker gangs, hates the system, even hates his own gang because they treat him like a child, like he doesn't feel like. He can stand up for himself and he doesn't realize like they're just looking out for yeah him. so once he gets the power that he can like look out for himself he's just like oh i can take whatever i want now and yeah. then he goes with that vibe that he's like all powerful until as they warn him he uh i i did runs out. like 
with like the one child like said to him about well you have all this power and you have you can make a choice of you can do great things with it or yeah you know this is why adults shouldn't have this kind of power i think because he you know i think at that point he could have been akira did you any of you guys watch it dubbed i did you did is it i feel like there's a line one of the children tell him that like you have this power I think they specifically say you don't have to be evil. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they tell him you don't have to be evil. You can do great things, with yeah. it, but adults shouldn't have it. Like it's a simple don't. line, but in a yeah. movie like this, it kind of works where they're just like, they tell him straight up like, you don't got to be evil. Yeah, because any of those kids could have been. Yeah. But they chose to try to uh, work with the uh, general. The kids right. were also interesting because like the, what, the youngest kid gets like kidnapped by... Uh, resistance um, resistance leader. and then is trying to like escape but then once he's brought back he's just kind of like resolved that he's stuck with him again i think that's because he was like the scared little kid that kind of just went along with what yeah he, what he gets dragged into which little kids do that i kind of get the vibe from the kids that they like obviously what happened to them is awful that they were just experimented on but it's also kind of like that this is just their life now so they're just kind of like yeah. stuck there and it's not like they're still tortured or anything they're like they're experimented a little bit or like well, they, they test were, them and they were tortured like back before like the apocalypse yeah so they like taught this so they like gave them these powers and then they're kind of like under the control of the the government and stuff so they're kind of interesting characters because they they yeah. are kind of on the military side but i also get the vibe they they, they act as protagonists and antagonists yeah because they do say, even like, there's a part where Tets, Tets, uh, Tetsuo. Tetsuo is like at the hospital and they like attack him because they want to try to stop the problem before yeah. it starts. But in doing so, they they kick off the problem. Yeah. yeah. Which actually is kind of nice to see characters actually follow through and try and like fix the issue up uh-huh. to the very end mm-hmm. instead of just saying, not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I would say the movie kind of falls flat on the fact of I wish they would have explained more why Tetsuo all of a sudden was had a Kira level powers. Not only did he have a Kira level powers because they gave him like the level seven drug. Mm, Yeah, which I guess there's different rating drugs that give him more power. But like, why was he already attuned to be a psychic and then just randomly was the one that got hospitalized like like why did they take him to do the experiment on him yeah like yeah. they explain that he he's attuned to being a psychic yeah but they never show like someone checking him or something like sir or they never got... ex- or they never explain there's not like a line that says like 10 percent of the population is like attuned to being psychic or like 1.5 yeah. percent or something like that. Yeah. i also like, did feel like the, the another part of the doctor like scientist guy that's really dumb is that he just gave this random street rat basically level seven superpowers, superpowers. Yeah. See, yeah. like that would make, what that, were you expecting that would happen? make sense though if they actively were just like collecting people and randomly yeah. experimenting on that would that would make sense at that point like but. it would have been interesting like okay in x-men days of future past like the government has uh like they decided that anybody that might have an x-men gene like have the x gene mm-hmm. automatically just gets captured and sent to a concentration camp right mm-hmm. like it's basically the holocaust all over again that's the whole like days of future past comic book thing yeah it would have made sense for, like in this story if they would have like even if it was just like in the opening title like uh the government is secretly like gathering psych people attuned to being psychic powers and stuff and that would make more sense why maybe there's a resistance or why there's like a revolution like yeah maybe they realize the government's trying to like do this stuff but it just seems kind of weird like there's three kids one of them's marked 24 so there's been like at least 24 previous kids yeah and there's akira that started world war three but besides for that like Everybody just goes about their business. Yeah, I guess they just find... Well, for one, it's very secretive. Like, the whole thing isn't supposed to be known about. And the, the right. Resistance did know about it because they did kidnap the one right. child. But... Why nobody, did they take Tetsuo? Nobody back? really comments on the fact that Tetsuo is psychic. Yeah. yeah well, also, or the fact that the girl, the Resistance leader, uh, Kay? Kai? Kay. 
K. Yeah. She can be possessed by psychic children. <laughs> that is also just and a then thing also that like channel their psychic powers and fight Tetsuo for a moment. That just kind of happens. See, that would have been fine too if they would have explained it's like, oh yeah, K has superpowers, but it's just she acts as like conduit or something. Well, they don't I explain. Was... Does she have superpowers? Can she just channel? Did the children just channel I think they her? kind of vaguely said because they're like, yeah, she's our she's like our last resort. I don't think K had powers. I think maybe she was just attuned or something where Kyoko, the older girl, could the one like, that can like, see her. in the future and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think because there were a lot of like, um, well, it does kind of it kind of showed that she was like possessing her a lot of the time. Yeah, I, well, I, yeah, because like her uh, didn't like her face change or something. So, there's like they a kept, there's like, an animated future in and out with yeah. like them talking at the same time. So. I think I'm too. Sure also, exactly. like she kind of manipulated him into finding all, or like getting to Tetsuo, like this the psychic girl did. Well, yeah, she was manipulating things like the whole time. Like she was even putting the thoughts. I think she was the one that put the thoughts of Akira in Tetsuo's head. Uh, I think so. that I'm was one sure. thing they never like. They they kind of made it seem like like Akira was trying to possess Tetsuo. In reality, Akira is just like I'm just chilling out in my containers akira's dead yeah akira's like five vials of bacon He's technically still alive yeah I think, he... just in pieces well i think well at the... he he made like he did the whole he did what tetsuo did right in the beginning of the film yeah at the, at the um, ending like is that yeah. supposed to be a nuclear blast no, or is that, that supposed to be i thought like, that was a nuclear blast that's akira but, uh, that's akira, maybe that was akira. All singularity so then if Tetsuo disappeared, then Akira must have not went all the no, way, maybe didn't disappear? what happened was, if, if I'm thinking right, what happened was is the children called Akira back. And Akira came to get Tetsuo. Because at the end, it says that we sent Tetsuo with Akira. He's with him. Oh, and that would make Because the main character, who I can't think of his name. Is his like, name was Kanada. Kanada. Yeah, Kanada is like, well, Tetsuo went off with him, and now they're both gone. Oh, that's right, because there yeah. was that Evangelion mental things happening at the end, where yeah. they were like having like flashbacks. And yeah, stuff. showing everything. So it's like, I think what they did is Akira went singularity 30 years before, so like back when World War Three broke out. And then the children all together were able to basically summon him, quote unquote. I guess that makes sense. And then he basically, I, I don't think Akira was ever malevolent. They never really hint at that. And I think he just basically, he got Tetsuo because Tetsuo ascended at that point and just yeeted him into a, like, apparently they like, just, a like, microverse went or singularity an to or the point like the like the scientist probably dies it's like it's the big bang it's the birth of the another universe <laughs> i hate that saying just gay yeah He's which is where i got the idea when i first watched the movie apparently after i watched it i thought the whole world just blew up but apparently it's just no boston baseball park or something no nah, yeah just like was, tokyo they're, they're olympics <laughs> actually here's the thing though oh yeah the olympics they're, they were gonna going have the on. olympics Here, here's going. the thing though the scale of all those buildings in the city, like after all of that happened with the flooding, that was up at the mid upper levels of the city. That was in the Skywalk platform. But that was only at one part. No, like when they pan out, that's the whole city. Like the city, there's still buildings intact, but most of it is all underwater. I don't think it's the whole city. Like how did the water get there? Uh, tsunami. There's you remember tsunami? like the huge like wave of water crash? You fell asleep, didn't you? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest. My second playthrough, or playthrough, <laughs> watch through, I got bored and started playing a video game. Yeah, while no, I was watching it. Like, but as like the whole like light dome is going, where Akira like pulled everything in, like the children tell like the general, get in, a tu in this tunnel, you'll be safe here when all of this happens. And then um, K and uh, main character's friend are like off way off and they see like the explosion going it's like then you just see like all this like this huge like tsunami crash to the city like everything gets destroyed uh, okay google we're doing a live uh checking here this is the first result on google 
Tokyo is destroyed by Akira on the 6th of December, 1982. Uh, 1992 in the English version. It was reconstructed as Neo Tokyo afterward, but was destroyed again 30 years later by Akira in retaliation to Nezu accidentally shooting Takashi through the head. I like completely spaced out when you said all of that. I'm sorry. Yes, the city had destroyed again. Okay. <laughs> but okay, I just I didn't think it got all. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, that that's Shinji my, getting the singularity. Yeah, that's my least favorite part of the movie is the ending. I think the ending just kind of a little bit comes out of nowhere. Looking up stuff, it's like it looks like Akira kind of possessed Tetsuo's like body and powers and stuff when he was brought back. And then they got like nuked together into a singularity thing. Yeah, because he like yeah. transcended existence. So, so anyways, he, that was my least favorite part of the movie. The I end? liked yeah, the ending. That one makes sense. I liked the um do you want to go into favorite moments? We kind of destroyed the whole so, formatting of the show, like right from the start. Sorry. We can talk about real quick. Let's talk about. OK, you said your least favorite part, which is the end. It is the end. OK, Ramakat, what was your least favorite part? Uh, Not like a long spiel, just like your general and, like, least favorite. I'm just trying to think of that. the part just basically where he just goes insane right away. OK, so like once he got hit by the biker guy. No, no, crazy. that that man like in the nursery where he like goes to try to kill the kid because oh, the kids. Okay. I understood it like he's like, oh, okay, you attack me, I'll attack. I'm yeah. gonna attack you. I'm gonna get back at. And you. And then all of a sudden he just goes like, I'm just gonna destroy the city. Yeah, like that just was like, yeah, mm, okay. I would have to say my least favorite part is probably. I like the ending ending part. I like the fact that like everything's resolved and kind of the hero gets away yeah. with the girl that was kind of cool i, I do and like that friend. too yeah i didn't it's like not the, the worst ending. i didn't like the fact that it went from those two fighting to all of a sudden new universe being born yeah that that's the thing that i dislike is one of the like storytelling principles is that the main character you want them to be heavily involved in resolving the conflict in the end and they're really important to it and it did kind of feel like he was just kind of there and then yeah. it just went all crazy hoopla kind of like i don't mind that that exists i just dislike that it feels like every anime movie ends with and then another universe was born or I, a new timeline was born or something you know yeah super I, I guess to steal a line from boom it'd be the devil's advocate <laughs> well that's just being the devil's advocate um I think that one reason why that happens so much is definitely Western story structure and Eastern story structure are two totally different things. They share similarities, but it's kind of like design design. Yeah. There. Like the design principles here for like logos and art and stuff are totally different from over there. The rules that we usually apply to things do not apply there well, and yeah. vice versa. But if mainly you... like the the. The thing about it is like, even though there's definitely some like complex, intricate reasoning and psychological, you know, reasoning to everything, it's like not that satisfying that he yeah. just kind of gets nuked I, into a new universe. I think the overall sh movie suffers from the, I'm going to make something so convoluted, you're going to think it's smart yeah <laughs> it kind of feels that way just a tiny bit and yeah. only at the end i think like for the most yeah. part i didn't think it was that complicated or like whatever like i yeah. felt the mysteries were interesting the like reveals were interesting and what was actually going on and the politics and everything i could i could understand and then the ending is just kind of like and akira is like you're waiting to see what akira is and then it's just like this thing and then yeah. he just kind of gets nuked into the cosmos so it's like oh, okay yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we've talked enough about our least favorite part. What we'll start with Ramen Cat. What is your most favorite part of the film? The part, the scene where Tetsuo and his, I guess, girlfriend are sitting there and she says, let's just leave together right now. Yeah. Because in Edge Runners, there's a part where Lucy and Dave, or I can't think of his name. 
David Martinez. Yeah. Um, I think his first name is David. It's yeah, David. it's David. There's a it mirrors like in Edge Runners. It mirrors where David and Lucy are sitting there looking at the city, and Lucy says, "Let's just leave together and leave all of this behind." Like, yeah. it, it's a direct reference to it, and that's like. I tried my best to try to find the scenes so I could put them together. I might have to, uh, yeah, future, future boom, uh, try to find that scene and just put it right here. Yeah, because I, I don't know. To me, that was cool seeing that reference because I know cyberpunk, like cyberpunk in a whole, did borrow a lot of stuff from this. So yeah, it's just cool seeing that. And I'm sure if I watched it again, I'd probably find a million other little things. I was like, oh yeah, this show references this. So yeah, that was my favorite thing out of the whole thing. The action sequences were amazing. I guess my other favorite would be where like Tetsuo just like gra- or, like stops the tank round that gets fired at him. Like that was pretty oh, cool. Oh, that was pretty cool. So yeah. My favorite parts were um were the main character. I love the main character. The whole main character's vibe of the vibe of just like why Canada's amazing. why did you get like into this like you know rebellion thing against the most powerful government it's like oh i like this girl and then that's like <laughs> the whole motivation for getting stuck in this thing he's also the most genuine like person of the entire thing where everyone has this big cause he doesn't really care about them he just wants the girl because he finds her attractive and he wants his friend back because he's his friend like he has no deeper motivation than that and I think that's like really refreshing compared to everything else that's going on with politics. It, it reminds and... me of that farmer's meme of the guy. It ain't it ain't much, but it's honest. With yeah, <laughs> like it, that's his vibe of just like I'm I'm just a bike you know gang member. Like I don't care about any of this, but I, I like this girl, so I'm gonna join into this that, rebellion. That's pretty realistic because so many people get deep into things, and that's like that's the stuff. Like, how did I get yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> well, also, there's so many. There's so many anime films and especially shows where the main character is this high ideal, high purpose in life Mm -hmm. type of character. Like, I'm going to become the strongest. I'm going to become God. I'm going to be the most powerful. They either have ultra high ideal or zero ideal at all. This guy is just like, I got my gang. I want the girl. Yeah. My friend's not a psychopath. I guess I got to go kill my friend. He's got some honor to him. Like, even though he's just like, you know, living on the streets and stuff. Well, because he's a leader. Oh, that line where he's fighting Tetsuo in like the laser like runs out of battery, he throws, he's just like, why don't you just fight like yeah, a man? I love that, where he's fight like, with your hands. this isn't fair, fight me with your fist. Like, you're such a loser that you have to rely on these powers to beat me right. when I'm just a normal dude. Like, that is such an epic line. And his um his fight with him is amazing because he just like, everyone's trying to shoot him with tanks and he's just like, the lasers seem to work well and just faces down with them against him with just a freaking laser and is like holding his own. And then that like when the laser so fails, he's like, I'm just going to grab the biggest yeah. block and just like throw it. And then <laughs> the, uh, the rant I love, one of my favorite, favorite, like very specific moments is when they're like called down the strike and the fight's going on for a while. And then suddenly this light comes from the sky and Tetsu is just like, like they're all like intense fighting. He's like, huh? What's this? And then yeah. just boom. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments because it was there's so much like crazy metaphysical stuff going on that you're just kind of like not even immediately not like bothered by just like random blue lights yeah. coming from this guy. So him just being like, huh, what's this? And then it's like, oh, they're just nuking him from high orbit. My it's second watch through, I forgot about the satellite laser, and I was like, <laughs> is he is uh, is Tatsu like powering up at that moment? And then he's yeah. just like, <laughs> boom. I'm just like, oh yeah. And it was pretty sick. It actually like, did damage and like lost his arm from it. Yeah. So stuff like that was cool. I liked his fights because it didn't feel like he was Superman where he couldn't be damaged. And this was just to show off how tough he was. Yeah. Like it felt like the battle had meaning because he could actually be damaged. It's just, they had to get through the barrier. Yeah. He had like force powers. The other thing I liked is when he first is getting experimented on and it's like show, slowly showing you he has powers. He like reaches for his glass and it just kind of like force. Mm-hmm is that brought to his sweet. hand that's a really cool moment to like start foreshadowing what what he has 
not to be um, that guy, but the whole scene where the stuffed animals attack him, I was getting real worried until he clarified, oh, it's milk. <laughs> what? That scene was oh, kind of right. freaky. It yeah. was freaky, but at the same time, it's like, how edgy are you going? Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's just a reference to the Evangelion hospital scene. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. No. I think it was a reference to them being kids because it's like stuffed animals and milk. Yeah, yeah. but it's like you never know in the in like I know. shows like that. It's like, where is this going? I was like, okay, this has to be milk, right? And if it is milk, that's still super weird. Weird. <laughs> yeah, and that's the like, problem. It's milk. That's the problem with old anime films and milk is it definitely uh <laughs> never looks like milk. <laughs> yeah. Um, I loved the opening sequence too. That opening sequence is it great. did not feel like a 1988 movie because the opening sequence feels like the Lego Batman movie. Like it's so over the top and just like super fast paced in your face right yeah. away. I would say the one other thing that I liked about the show. Is just the simple music, the simple oh. drums of the yeah. Like the it just like music, it, it set kind of an unnerving tone. That's the first note I made. Is the music is fantastic throughout the entire movie. I loved the music. The music is so simple and refined that it never gets in the way of the film. And the, yeah, but so like it, uh, it sets, sets kind of like an unnerving vibe. tone. Yeah, to like there's some of like voice like singing in some of the tracks too. And it just like puts you right into yeah. the world. It's really this cool. This is totally random, but like I just got done watching the Mario movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the Mario movie, they have this 80s soundtrack. And there's a scene where they're fighting the bad guys and stuff. Mm. And ACDC back in black starts playing. It's totally random. Yeah. Doesn't fit in a children's film. Yeah. But like you compare to that to this. To this. Yeah. Where the actually like in the Mario movie. And this is why I'm bringing it up. It feels like it's random. It is. The, the sound, the music, like besides for the Mario music, everything feels random. The Mario music was so good. And then they're just like throw in the random, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, where they like have... licensed music we got. Right. And but in this, like there's no like 80s like songs or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, it was like all that, original right? stuff. Like there's not even like Japanese like pop or whatever they would call the 80s music. Yeah, so is pop. it pop or jazz? Pop, yeah. just pop music. Yeah, but anyways, there wasn't nothing big like that. It was just like it was refined, it was in the background, it, fit it felt the vibe. Good. It, it was like ambient. That's, yeah, that's yeah it, it was. was very ambient. It fit the vibe for every scene where it's just like it something intense like was happening. Alien. Yeah, kind of like how Alien yeah. just has just atmosphere. At, like it's quiet a lot of the time, but then when there's music, it it adds. The music yeah. felt alien, as in like not in this world too. Like yeah. it was. It didn't feel like a movie soundtrack. It just felt like something totally different. It, it was felt such like a they were trying score. to make it an actual like sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. Like this music is very unique. Um, uh, I really like the focus an on the facial animations. I thought that was pretty cool. Like usually it's just, you know, lip flap thing going on. They made like their whole mouth like contort based on what they were saying, which is pretty wild. And they don't do that a lot. It, I would it was say... a little awkward in the dub, but yeah, I don't yeah, know. that makes sense that it would be weird in the dub in the sub. It's great because it like fits exactly what they're saying and how they're pronouncing the words and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, my favorite part of the whole film is just the animation. Like the story Animation's is kind of like hit and miss for me throughout all of it. I can't pick a definite like favorite part, but just the animation all the way through from the beginning of like you have this like landscape view of tokyo as it blows up to like the ending where you're spanning out and you see like the flooded like neon tokyo mm -hmm. like everything feels like it fits the background all the characters just like them walking down the street feels like they're actually in the city yeah. instead of just like a set piece yeah yeah which was i don't know i enjoyed it so i kind of hate it when anime especially like modern day isekais it feels slide like they have along like, the ground not slide along the ground but like they have like only so many spots where they actually show story like if you yeah. look at kanasuba kanasuba only has like a few places where they're constantly at mm -hmm. that feels more like a sitcom that way yeah where like they built a set and they're only going to show that parts because they don't have money to build more like yeah. this actually felt like they're showing different parts of the city yeah and stuff i would yeah, definitely, definitely say the environment kind of 
told its own little story. Yeah. Yeah. It was just kind of like the decay of it. I thought it was super cool. Like, it it felt realistic where it's not just like, oh, this is the apocalypse. It's kind of like the apocalypse already happened. We're kind of rebuilding. People are still, you know, the 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 people. and The way the city was laid out, I have to expect like some kind of mutant pop out somewhere yeah <laughs> like especially like the canals and stuff like that. where's the mutant fish or like just like mutant like underground dwellers or something. like when they're yeah. in the sewers just expect to get attacked by like yeah Ninja instead Turtles. it's like guy on freaking hover bike just yeah <laughs> like it was really cool i don't know i enjoyed i guess that brings us to the point of um well we went over your favorite part right reese yes wheeze he's Reese. Did I just call you a Reese? Reese. Reese. Reese the Weeze. <laughs> Anyways, that brings us to the part of what do you guys got any like final thoughts? Like Um, I'd say definitely if you haven't watched it, one, I don't know how you made it this far. <laughs> well, that's episode. why we didn't do a recap. If you Two, I would I would suggest watching it at least once because it is like for anime pretty historic and it is the milestone of animation just in general if you like animation watch it yeah because this is definitely animator teams like huge flex of like their capabilities this is equivalent to how studio ghibli like puts slime in every episode or like every movie to just show off how good they are at their animating this crew just was like hey look at all our people doing this thing because there's so many scenes that were just kind of un quote unquote unnecessary but they were to show off what the artists and animators well, could do even like this unlike studio ghibli like this is old enough where it's 100 thousand percent hand drawn oh yeah mm-hmm. there was a couple scenes where um like there's a scene where the general's going down into like the vault area to Akira. Yeah. If you look at it really careful and not to pick it apart, but this kind of shows. There's an animation loop. No, you can see where it's the painting and his whole section is the animated part laid over it. Oh, like, that's cool. That so it's like cool. that's that's just proof to how handmade this. Yeah. Is. Yeah. It's yeah like, that's cool. Like I said, not tearing apart. It's like to see that just kind of seals the fact that it's like, holy crap, this all was done by hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's really impressive. I guarantee as many animators and artists died making this as the guys that did Edge Runners painting all the little puddle details. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds me of like the film that we just watched recently, 1917. Yeah. yeah. Like where it's like it's it's directed in a way and it's filmed in a way where you can't tell where it cuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's cool when they put that much detail into a movie. Yeah, like it's definitely worth watching Akira just for that fact alone. Yeah. Like, you might not be blown away by the story, especially now in 2023, when this was made in, you know, 50 years ago. Honestly, almost I, kind of a little pinpoint thing of the story, and this might be where it kind of feels a little darker than it should be. Outside of the psychic stuff, it kind of feels relevant of a future that could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, well, a lot of people are joking back in 2019 when. The Olympics was going on. It was in Japan. And uh, yeah, they're just like, okay, we just need like a bomb to go off now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, all, no, because like, yeah, that was the but, only thing but keeping no, us from like, Akira like, that, timeline. The yeah. reason why I say that is because where most people try to like fear monger the whole thing. Oh, if like everything happened, nukes happen. It's like, that's it. That's just nothing. It's like, no, if there's humans, they'll try to rebuild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, that was kind of cool seeing that. It's like, yeah. There's very few stories I've seen where it's like that. I can give it to this, the cyberpunk, and probably like the Judge Dredd comics. It's like the few things I've seen where it's actually society is like functionally rebuilt itself. Right. Yeah, and there's still just like bad politicians and all this like different yeah. political stuff going on. You have things like Fallout, but at the same time, it's like the grandest cities are all scrapped. They're not actually. Well, Fallout goes a different, I'm not going to get into it, but Fallout definitely goes a different route where humanity hasn't been rebuilt, but there's reasons why it hasn't been rebuilt. Yeah. yeah. There's where... there's people in the background that keep it Bar- not barbaric. Yes. Yeah, yeah, where this, it's like, well, uh, I guess we got to rebuild. Right. I think partially the story works really well from modern day because it kind of subverts the expectation if you've seen the like superhero genre because it builds up in a similar way 
with a down and out like you know the underdog loser character who's everyone seems better than him and even his own crew doesn't like isn't doesn't respect him a way that they feel like they have to save him all the time right and then once he gets powers instead of becoming a hero he goes the opposite direction and starts destroying the thing because he just has the power now and he's and he's been corrupted by it so i thought it's really interesting in that way too because it kind of feels it's very subversive of what you think the character is going to do also too not a lot of anime cliches on this definitely well it yeah. was uh yeah it was kind of before it, most it, of the it, was, it was before that but, but it just it didn't feel usually anime it, it felt its own thing it didn't feel like because usually cliches come from shows like this because they do it well and then everyone copies them so seeing something like this because like you can go back and watch like the original star wars and be like this is a very cliche story because everything copied this yeah this is like it feels so original and different despite being such an old like classic that everything like references so it's really interesting to me because it does feel like it's very old, but it doesn't feel cliche or like boring to me. Like it felt like a very rich world and rich story. Yeah, I I mean, I enjoyed it the second pl play through, <laughs> watch through. Um, it's just I think the one reason I got bored and started playing a video game is because besides for the animation, like if you've already seen the animation, like watching it you again, the story the... feels like me. Not meh, just like you know what's going on and you can just kind of listen and watch it. Yeah. Like I, I watched, I was watching my dual screen. I was playing, I was actually playing an anime game called Tower Fantasy or something <laughs> like that. Like a new anime MMO thing. But anyways, and then I was watching on the second screen and like I'd watch, like I probably stopped playing the game and started watching the ending. But like the beginning part, like you could follow the beats and just like enjoy it. So yeah. Uh, Weeze, I yes. think you basically already said your highlight, but you got like a specific like last thought. Um, mostly just I feel like the main character really makes the show that even if you kind of miss all the side stuff going on, if you can connect to the main character, if you like the main character, then you'll really like the show. Yeah. Also, Rip Kaori, the girl that the uh, that Tetsuo that was likes. horrifying. Um. That, like watching that a second time still made me cringe. Th this is a thing that also feels kind of like an anime trope for these movies. Like same with um, Ponyo and stuff, where the side female character just gets like gets wasted. Get wasted. I, I will say that the show. I mean, not compared to stuff nowadays, but for its time, was pretty brutal. In a way, yeah. though, that kind of adds to the sub theme of she blindly followed him. Yeah, and he didn't realize there was someone that actually cared about him. Yeah, yeah, like it it was at the very last moment where he was realizing what was happening. And he was like, please, yeah. somebody save her. I can feel her die. Yeah. Like that moment. I said cringe, but it like, what's a better word than cringe? a painful cringe? Pain, it yeah. felt painful to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said those in the dub. He said the last moments, I can feel her pain and suffering. Yeah. Like you could tell like he's gone full psychic and he's just like, he can feel like her literal and emotions. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's like merge. Like I think she and him and Akira Mer were all like merging together yeah. into one. It's so it's like, kind of, yeah, really awful. But yeah, really just sad. like the side woman getting like annihilated is definitely something that we've yeah. seen more than once. <laughs> Well, I mean, in Ponyo, he, she didn't get killed she or anything. She didn't get killed. She just, but she got, just like, like, got like blown off. Yeah, like. hardcore blown off. So, yeah, that's um, that that's pretty much all I got to say. I also thought the themes of like worshiping technology, like the doctor of how insane he is, the mad scientist, and the government that's just like so greedy. And yeah, the government that should be there helping, just purely to help We're people terrible. is just like heart like yeah clinging to their money yeah that was gonna be my last thought like if you like themes of futures that we don't want to happen or like worshiping technology to the point where it gets beyond us in this case it's psychic technology and maybe in our world the big hype thing is ai technology like mm -hmm. um That's also good. if you just like shows like darling in the franks evangelion um 
Elfin Light is very similar to this. That like, was the other anime that I had seen references of where Tetsuo is walking through the halls fighting the soldiers. Yeah. It's like a direct line to like when Lucy's walking out yeah. of like the facility. Exactly. Well, it's two sidekicks just annihilating normal people. Yeah. <laughs> like it's bloody, like it's not it's as gory. like gory as like Elfin Lied was. Right. But it's like when I seen that, it's like that that was when I was thinking I was like, oh yeah. I feel like there's even a Kira slide in Elfin Light. I don't know. I'm I think not going to make a second the, watch through. Me so. neither. I might look it up. I like watching compilations of Akira slides. It's, it's kind of <laughs> entertaining. But, but yeah. Um, besides for that, I think we're done with the review. Um, I think overall, because we do this randomly, uh, I'm going to give it four giant foreheads out of ten. No, sorry, that's too high. I'm gonna give it seven giant foreheads out of ten. That's a better rating. Okay. Scale. Giant foreheads. You know how his forehead oh, grows oh, throughout yeah, the film. Okay. I give it how much I enjoyed it was like a nine out of ten, but how good I think it is is more like an eight out of ten because I think Fair the enough. ending and stuff is kind of like mediocre in parts. But I did enjoy it like it was a nine out of ten. I enjoyed this movie a lot. Yeah. I'll give it. Yeah, about a six and a half creepy psychic children out of ten. <laughs> six and a half? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh besides for that, it's a good film. Of course, you should have watched it already. So if you haven't Get in your time uh, machine. Go back to yourself. The yeah, there you go. Get, that's better. Get in a time machine, forget about it, rewatch it, or hit yourself with the forget me stick. Rewatch it and then watch it. Well, what you could do is take your copy, go back in time to your younger self mm -hmm. and watch it. All right, just shove it in his face, like yeah, strap just, him to a just, chair. Just bring snacks with you, sit down with yourself, and just watch it. You're technically not alone if okay, it's just enough. you. <laughs> if if two of yourselves are watching a movie in the room together, I don't know how to end that. Never mind. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Well, it's night here. Yeah, it's night here, but good day. to them, it could be 5 o'clock in the morning. Good morning, good night, good prenumbra, good also, twilight. Also, this is on YouTube. We can't just end it. We have to say, hit that like button. Hit oh, that subscribe oh, button. heck no, Leave jives. a comment. <laughs> Support the channel with your views and your utmost loyalty to our brand. The cringe. That's all for us, Jamiao. All right, see you all later. Bye.